What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the cheapest mini PCs we have ever had on the channel. This is the GMK Tech Nookbox G3. And if you head over to their website, they've got a few coupons. I'm also going to leave some in the description. You can get this for $99. It's going to be the bare bones unit, so you will have to add your own RAM and storage. But it's really easy to do, and the G3 actually utilizes DDR4, so you can pick it up really cheap right now. Get you a SODEM stick, 8 or 16 gigs, it'll be plenty for this. Now obviously, one of the main reasons I wanted to get my hands on this was the price. It's not far off from a Raspberry Pi 5 with 8 gigs of RAM. With those coupons, you can get the G3 for $99, and I wanted to see if we could outperform the Raspberry Pi 5, which I suspect it probably will. Now inside of the box, along with the mini PC itself, we've also got a mounting bracket, comes with our 12 volt power supply and an HDMI cable. They do offer this in two different color variants. We've got the lush green, but they've also got a titanium gray over on their website. And when it comes to IO, up front here, we've got two full size USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. Moving around back, we've got two more of those 3.2 ports, dual full size HDMI. Both of these will do 4K 60 out a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Like I mentioned, going bare bones is gonna be the cheapest option that they offer, but it's really easy to get in here and add your RAM and storage, top pops right off. And from here, we can add a 2280 PCIe 3.0 M.2 SSD, and it only supports single channel RAM, and that's because of the chip they opted to use. Unfortunately, these chips only support single channel, it is DDR4, and I'm going with 8 gigs running at 3200 megahertz. As for that M.2, I'm going with a 512 gigabyte PCIe 3.0 drive. It goes right here, very easy to install, so if you go bare bones with it, you can put this thing together in a few minutes. It will support up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. I just went with 8 to keep the price as low as possible here. And when it comes to the specs, the G3 is using the Intel N100 CPU. We've got four cores, four threads, a max clock up to 3.4 gigahertz, built-in Intel UHD graphics with 24 execution units at 750 megahertz. You can do up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 at 3200 megahertz, one M.2 SSD, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and if you head over to their website, you can see that they are offering a few different RAM and storage variants. You can go with 8 gigs of RAM with up to a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD or 16 gigs of RAM with a 512 SSD. And if you did get one that's pre-configured, it comes with Windows 11 Pro installed. But keep in mind, the base price on those will be higher than a bare bones unit. Okay, so I've got Windows 11 installed, everything's updated, and I've been messing around with this for a little while, trying to get a feel for what kind of TDP this little CPU is running out, what kind of clocks we can expect from the GPU and CPU. As you can see here, we've got the Intel N100. And if I run a stress test with CPU-Z, we've got our wattage listed right here. We're at about 12 watts just on the CPU. Now, all four cores on this will do up to 2.9 at the same time. We can get two to go to 3.1, or one up to 3.4. And like I mentioned, with a lot of these lower end chips, this isn't the full TDP. This is really what the CPU is gonna be pulling at kind of a max load there. It can still use a little more because we haven't hit up the iGPU yet. So putting some load on that iGPU, total TDP here is about 16.5 watts. So you saw it jump up close to 17. And with this, our GPU clock is at 750 megahertz. Well, 748, so that's basically where it is. And at 16 watts, we can send sufficient power to the iGPU. So trying to use a third-party app to up the TDP on this really isn't going to help out because it's sending enough power to get the clocks up on the CPU and GPU. And yeah, this is definitely a lower-end CPU, but at that kind of wattage, it's actually performing much better than I thought it would. Now, while uh, using this as an everyday desktop for web browsing, email checking, even 4K video playback is going to do a pretty decent job. Now, uh, first thing we're going to do here is just test out a little bit of web browsing. I am on Wi-Fi right now. We're not plugged into Ethernet. And we'll head over to uh, GMK Tech's website real quick. We've got a lot of mini PCs, kind of an image heavy website here. And yeah, everything loads right up. Check out the Intel mini PCs they offer. I actually haven't seen this one. But yeah, you could definitely get some web browsing done on this. 
Now it's time to check out some 4K video playback because I actually didn't know what to expect from this. We'll just find a 4K demo here. Let's go with this one. We want full screen. 1440, but we want to go to 4K. Stats for nerds, you can see right there, 4K. And if you take a look at stats for nerds, on the initial load-in, we had one drop frame. I actually thought we'd have a lot more on the N100, but given that this is running at kind of the correct wattage, I mean, enough to get the higher clocks on all four cores here, it's actually handling 4K60 video playback really well. And this is just streaming here. If you wanted to run from the internal drive or an external drive, it's also going to run them at full speed. Obviously, this mini PC wasn't intended for gaming, but that's not going to stop us from trying out some PC games and some emulation. Starting off here with Minecraft, this is the Windows Store version. Always have people asking about this on these lower end PCs, so I figured I'd test it here. And yeah, I mean, 60 FPS, I didn't have to change any of the settings from within Minecraft itself, and the PC's resolution is at 1080. Next on the list, we've got Half-Life 2 1080p with a high medium mix, and going into this, I knew we'd be able to run this at 1080p. Obviously, really old game, and games like Portal, Portal 2, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2 are going to run at full speed. The Source Engine games work really well on these lower-end Intel chips. And finally here, for the PC gaming side of things, we've got OG Skyrim. Unfortunately, with this, even at 900p, we were under 60. We averaged 54 FPS at 900, but taking it down to 720 low, we'll get a 60 FPS across the board. Now it's time to move over to some emulation, and I'm really impressed with what this can do, especially given the price of this thing. First up, we've got PSP using PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, 2x resolution, DirectX 11 back in. 60 FPS, really great performance, which means we'll be able to upscale the easier to emulate games with this PSP emulator. Next up, we've got some GameCube using Dolphin. DirectX 11 back in, I did have to keep it at the native resolution. Time Splitters 2 up front here, easier one to emulate, so we're going to move over to something a little harder, and that's F-Zero GX. And I was sure that this was going to fall on its face when we got to this game because it's definitely a harder one to emulate on these lower end Intel chips. But at the native resolution, using that DirectX 11 back end, we can actually run this at 60 FPS. Now, no upscaling is going to be possible, especially on a track like this, but easier to emulate games will be able to go up to 720. I really didn't think we'd be able to run this game at full speed. PS2 is another one that performed much better than I ever thought it would on the N100. We're using PC SX2, DirectX 11 back in, native resolution. Again, just like GameCube, we're not going to be able to upscale PS2 very well. But at the native resolution with PC SX2, it even handles God of War 2. And uh, if you take a look at Afterburner, we're up there close to 8.8 .8 watts in some cases, almost 9 watts, only utilizing 30% of that GPU. Now, as soon as we go to 720, it really does max out that GPU, but at the native res, these games run great. Overall, I'm actually impressed with this N100 powered mini PC, given the form factor and especially the price for the bare bones unit. Using those coupons, you can bring this down to $99, and of course, you will need to add your own storage and RAM. You can pick up a used stick on eBay for really cheap. I would go with 16. We've only got eight here with this unit, but it handled everything we threw at it in this video. Now, the main question is, at $99, is it worth picking this up or an $80 Raspberry Pi 5 with eight gigs of RAM? With this unit, we can actually run Linux on it just like we can with the Raspberry Pi. And to tell you the truth, I really do think that this is going to put out much better performance than the Pi 5, even with an overclock on that new CPU. I wouldn't be opposed to testing out Linux on this mini PC, something like a desktop operating system, or we could even go with a retro gaming operating system like Bado Serra. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know in the comments below. If you want to learn a little more about the GMK Tech Nookbox G3, I'll leave some links in the description along with a coupon code. So remember, if you use their code over on their website and the code in the description, you can get this for $99, the bare bones unit. But that's it for this one. Like always, Thanks for watching.